so the main result we proved in the previous lecture was Urison's lemma so <clears throat> we begin this lecture by proving the Stitze extension theorem So, before we begin the proof, we make this simple remark. So, recall that Ulysses' lemma says that given disjoint closed subsets, A and B. There is a continuous map F from X to zero one such that F of A is zero and F of B is one. <clears throat> so by Composing with this continuous map, let's say a linear map rho, which is a homeomorphism. So this implies it's from x to a comma b. And so if I call this capital F, then f of a is equal to a and f of b is equal to b. So theorem. So let X be a normal topological space. And let A contained in X be a closed subset. So then there are two extension theorems. The first one says that f from a to minus r comma r be a continuous function. Then we can extend f to a continuous function. capital F from x to minus r comma r and the second extension theorem says that let f from a to r be a continuous function then we can extend it to a continuous function f from x to r so let us prove are these two theorems so proof so we will use Fourisson's lemma to construct a sequence of functions a sequence of continuous functions f 
f n s from x to z x to minus r comma r <coughs> which are uniformly cauchy that is for every epsilon positive there exists n such that for all m comma n which are greater than equal to this capital n and for all x in x we have the absolute value of fn x minus fm x is strictly less than epsilon so in particular this means that the fn x is a Cauchy sequence so <clears throat> point wise all of these converge to a capital F and so there's an exercise so this statement is left to an exercise as an exercise show that Fn will converge point wise to a function f from x to minus r comma r and then show that f is continuous Okay, so first let us construct F1 from x to minus r from r. <clears throat> For this, we divide this interval minus r comma r into three equal parts. So this we call I1 R, this we call I2 R, this we call I3 R. So I1 R is equal to minus R comma minus R by 3. I2 R is equal to minus R by 3 comma R by 3. And I3 R is equal to R by 3 comma R. So then minus r comma r is in the union of these. <clears throat> so as i1 r and i3 r are disjoint, It follows that f inverse of i1 r and f inverse of i3 r are disjoint closed subsets of A. So recall that f is from A to minus r from r. And so these are disjoint closed subsets. Of X. So by Urison's lemma, there is 
a continuous function. g from x to minus r r by 3 comma r by 3 such that g of this closed subset f inverse i1 r is a minus r by 3 and g of f inverse of is this so let us denote the restriction of g to a by g sub a so we claim that this infinity norm between f and g sub a is less than or equal to 2r by 3. So what is the meaning of this infinity norm? It means that for every x, f of x minus g of a of x should be less than or equal to 2 by 3 for every x in a. So let us check this. So suppose x belongs to f inverse i1 r then f of x belongs to minus r comma minus r by 3 and g of x is equal to minus r by 3 so in this case the claim is true so suppose x belongs to f inverse i2 r then f of x belongs to minus r by 3 comma r by 3 and g of x also belongs to minus r by 3 comma r by 3 so in this case also the claim is true so note that this claim is f of x minus g sub a of x is less than or equal to 2 r by 3 for all x in a and the third case is i3 r so then f of x is in r by 3 comma r and g of x is equal to r by 3 <coughs> right so in this case also claim is true so I mean let's let's take for instance let's take the first one so this is minus r is minus r by 3 and g of x is somewhere over here so obviously the difference between g of x is somewhere over here so the difference between any two points is less than the length of this interval which is 2r by 3 so yeah so now let f1 from a to minus 2r by 3 to 2r by 3 be defined by f1 of a is equal to f of a minus g sub a of a so now we repeat the above process with the function f1 and the interval minus 2r by 3 comma 2r by 3 so then we get a continuous function g2 from x to <clears throat> minus 2r by 3 square comma 2r by 3 square such that 
f1 minus g2 restricted to a infinity is less than or equal to 2 square so that is And this is a function. So in general, so we keep repeating this. <clears throat> so yeah, so now we let F2, we let this function to be F2. And we keep repeating this and so what we get is we get gi from x to and so we get these functions gi such that The infinity norm of f minus g1 minus g2 minus g sub n infinity is less than equal to 2 to the power n r by 3 to the power n. So let f sub n be equal to g1 plus g2 plus so on plus gn. So it is easily checked. that 1 fi's are uniformly Cauchy so this implies that the fi axis they converge to some point in the real line and that point we define to be f of x 2 on a the fi's converge to f pointwise so this is because of this condition yeah and 3 the absolute value of f of x is less than equal to r so then using the above exercise follows that fi converges to f and f is continuous on x such that f restricted to a is equal to f so this completes the proof of the first part of the theorem so let us now prove the second part So in the second part, we are given f from a to r. So fix a homeomorphism phi from r to minus And define a 
function f tilde. So this is the composite. First we use f and then we use phi. So f tilde is equal to phi composite. So as minus 1 comma 1 is contained in 1 comma minus 1 comma 1, the closed interval minus 1 comma 1. So this implies f tilde is a continuous map from a to this thing and using the first part the previous part we can find capital F tilde from x to minus 1 1 such that F tilde A is equal to such that it extends F So let D be the closed subset union. So we take the inverse image of minus one and one. So this is a closed subset. And as F tilde of this A is contained in minus one comma one. So this implies that F tilde, and so this implies that A intersected D is empty. So then there is a continuous function by Ulusson's lemma. H from X to 0, 1, such that H of A is 1 and h of d is equal to 0. So consider the function, the product function, h times f tilde. So again, there's a function from x to minus 1 comma 1. This is continuous and so this is continuous and has image in minus one comma one. Why is that? So if not then there exists x such that h of x into f tilde of x is equal to plus or minus 1. So this implies that h of x has to be 1 and f tilde x has to be plus or minus 1. So since f tilde x is plus or minus 1, this implies x belongs to d but on d h of x is 0. So let f be equal to h times f tilde, then f from x to minus 1, 1 is continuous and f restricted to a is equal to h restricted to a times f tilde restricted to a, but h restricted to h is 1 times f tilde restricted to a. And that is equal to f tilde. So thus, when we compose f here and phi inverse to r, so that is phi inverse compose. is from x to r and find inverse compose f restricted to a is equal to find inverse compose f tilde 
which is equal to phi inverse compose phi compose f is equal to f. Thus we get the required extension. So this completes the proof of theorem. So the most natural topological spaces we encounter. So I mean, these are Rn and its subspaces, R metric spaces. So given a topological space, can we put a metric on X such that the topology generated by the metric that is the topology using the open balls is the given topology is the topology we started with so this is a natural question and obviously there are some necessary conditions there are some necessary conditions So for instance, X should be host off at the very least. And we also saw every metric space is normal, is normal, right? So X should also be normal. If the topology were to arise from metric, so thus it is natural to ask. if x is a normal topological space then does the topology come from a metric So we shall now address this question. So we begin with some preliminaries. So definition, so let X be a topological space we say X is second countable if it has a basis whose cardinality 
इस काउंट पे सो वी हैव सम ऑब्वियस एग्जांपल्स ऑब्वियसली आर एन इज सेकंड काउंटेबल एंड ऑब्वियसली इफ एक्स इज सेकंड काउंटेबल then all its subspaces are second countable so for metric spaces for metric spaces we have the following criteria for second countability so the proposition So let X be a metric space. Then X is second countable. If and only if X has a countable dense subset. So there is a dense subset whose cardinality is countable. So let us prove this. So let us assume that X is second countable. Let B be a basis for the topology. countable basis which is countable so let b i where i in i be its elements so we just number them using natural numbers so choose x i and b in b i for each i so we just choose one x i So we claim that the set X i is dense in X. That is closure. so it suffices to show that every non empty open subset of x meets the set xi right so if u is Non empty and open. So then it contains some bi, and so it contains the side. So conversely, let X n be a 
then subset of x. So we let b to be equal to, we just take balls around each xn of radius 1 upon m for m belong to natural numbers and clearly b is countable it is a countable union of countable sets so it's countable So we claim that P is a basis for the topology on X. So let U be open in X and let X belong to U. Then there is N very large such that B X comma one upon N is contained in U. So you could be like this and x is here so this distance is 1 upon n so consider the set b x comma 1 upon 4 n So it contains xm for some m as xi is dense. So let's make a picture. So this distance is 1 upon n is x and let's say this distance is 1 upon 4 n and we are taking a point m over here x n here so it is easily checked that b x m comma 1 upon 4 n is contained in b x comma 1 upon n so this implies that x belongs to b x n comma 1 upon 4 n is contained in b x comma 1 upon n which is contained in u So this proves that P is a basis which completes the proof of the proposition. So as a corollary of this proposition, so let us prove the following. So a compact metric space is second countable. So proof. 
so we will find a countable dense subset so we will find construct a countable dense subset so fix a natural number and cover x by balls of radius 1 by n so x is compact this has a finite subcover so let Sn denote the centers of the open balls in this finite subcover. And let S be the union of all these Sns. So it is clear that S is countable. So we claim that S is dense in X. So enough to show We take any open ball of the type BXR, then its intersection with S is non empty. So choose N very large so that 1 upon N is strictly less than R by 4. So as x is equal to union y belong to Sn, by 1 upon n, it follows that there is y in Sn such that b x comma r intersected b r by 4, sorry. So there's going to be some y. This instance is one by n. Is not empty. So now it follows easily. That b y comma 1 upon n is contained in bxr so as 1 upon n is strictly less than r by so this is left as an exercise so thus y belongs to bx which proves s is dense so using the previous proposition we get x a second column. So next we define regular spaces so topological space x is said to be regular
if given a point x and a closed subspace a contained in x such that x does not belong to a then we have open sets u and v such that x belongs to u a belongs to v and u intersection b is empty so we have this point a x and we have this closed set so we should be able to separate these two using open sets so obviously normal implies regular so the following now analogous to the one for normality is left as an exercise so let x be a regular space and let small x belong to u where u is open then we can find an open set v such that x belongs to v v is going to be closure which is going to So the last theorem we want to prove today is a regular and second countable space is normal. So proof. So let B denote a countable basis for X. So let C and D be two disjoint closed subsets. So we need to find open sets U and V such that C is containing U, D is containing V, and U intersection V is empty. So for X in D And using the above lemma, yeah, and using the above lemma, we can find a basic open subset V sub X such that x belongs to v sub x and v sub x in this enclosure intersected c is empty so we apply the previous lemma to the point x and the open subset is x 
माइनस सी सो एज बी इज काउंटेबल वी में इंडेक्स दीज बी सब एक्सेस एज वी एंड फॉर एन इन नेचुरल नंबर्स so define w n to be union i equal to 1 to n v i so then w i is contained w2 there is an increasing chain of open sets is contained in their union and 3 wn closure intersected c so wn is a finite union therefore its closure is going to be vn closure intersected c this is empty so similarly doing the above for points of c we get an increasing union an increasing chain of open subsets c is contained in the union of all of them and 3 the closure of each of this does not meet t so since d does not meet any of the u and closure it follows that Wn intersected with D is contained in Wn minus U and closure. Taking union, is contained in union but this union is exactly D and this is open. so similarly we get c is contained in the union of u and minus w and closure again this is open so we claim that the intersection of these two open sets is empty if not then there exists i comma j such that the set s which we define to be ui minus wi closure intersected wj minus uj closure this set is not empty so now let us arrive at a contradiction so we may assume so assume that i is greater than equal to j <clears throat> or before that so note that s is contained in wj and ui minus wi closure 
so s is contained in ui minus wi closure implies s is disjoint from wi closure but if i is greater than equal to j so then wj is contained in wi closure which is a contradiction because on the one hand s has s is contained in wj which gives a contradiction so let's as s is contained in wj and s is disjoint from wi closure so similarly if j is greater than equal to i then s is contained in ui and wj minus uh, and wj and wi minus uj closure sorry wj minus uj closure so again we get a contradiction so this proves that the intersection is empty which proves the theorem So we will end here.